everybody. Um, last week we spoke about Samuel Hanagid, and uh, we saw that he was somewhat like Hazai Bishaprut, starting as a, um, well, not as a doctor, but uh, in his case, but as a uh, merchant of spices, then became, uh, did things for the, for, for the, for the emir or the king, then eventually became the man next to the throne and even the the leader of the of the Islamic army of um, Granada, uh, which is unheard of. And we're going to see if we make it there today that that caused yeah a lot of uh, animosity among certain Muslims who were who felt. This is a this is a violation of Islamic law of the pact with uh, Omar. Um, this is uh, how can Jews be so successful? They have to know their place because they don't have the right re religion. We Muslims have the right religion, therefore we should be the upper hand. But now they are, and that caused animosity eventually, and that's how things go. Eventually, unfortunately, um, coming to a very painful explosion but we're going to see that now we also saw he was uh, a prolific poet himself also he, he supported just like Hazai Ibn Shabrut had done poetry and Jewish sciences uh, and and even Talmudic studies even though he was critical of the way the things have been that had been done and um, and one of the people uh, people that he supported as a patron was Solomon, or actually maybe you should say Solomon, I don't know, with an A, or Suleiman, but so maybe, I don't know, um, Shulomon. Uh, in English it becomes with an O, right? Um, Ibn Gabirol. Good. So not Evan, but Ibn. So this is him. And um, here this, this slide says, of all the people that Samuel Hanagi sponsored, undoubtedly the most famous is Solomon Ibn Gabirol. Now I have his, uh, his dates. He was born in 1021, um, uh, but we don't know when he died. And look, he either became 29 years old or um, 49 years old. In any case, he died young. That, that seems to be clear. But uh, between 1050 and 1070, that's a big range. And uh, yeah, in, in antiquity, you might have this kind of a margin of insecurity. But the time that we're talking about now, especially somebody who is famous, usually we don't have. It's usually one or two years that we not sure when he died. This is this is a huge difference. Um, so there are two different uh, theories about it, about his death. But in any case, it's not clear when he died because he disappeared at a certain point from the radar. Now. He's, a, he's an interesting, very interesting character, dramatic and interesting. So let's look again on the map. We always start with the map. We, we spoke last time, mentioned, uh, we went through the, quite extensively through the history uh, of um, Al-Andalus, of, of, of Iberia. And we saw that the, the, the great, that the great um, Caliphate of Cordoba fell apart because of uh, uh, a civil war, and that the country fell apart, Islamic territory fell apart in smaller mini-states, smaller taifas. So a lot of these people, also um, oh. also um, Samuel uh, the Nagid, had been born in Cordoba, and of course, because of the civil war, the family, and he was still young, uh, moved to other places, right? Solomon's parents also had gone from Cordoba to Malaga, which is in the south there. Now you see that little circle in the south. Um, and uh, they had gone there and they had been from the upper echelons of society um, and, and with connected uh, to, to, to influential people. Uh, but so this is where Solomon was born in Malaga. It says here in the slide, his parents died when he was still very young, and they left him with no relatives at all. Luckily, his father had been a prominent figure with powerful friends. And one of these friends lived in Zaragoza, or Zaragoza, uh, in Spanish. And 
And this person became his caretaker. Of the, the name of that person was Yikuti El Ibn Hassan El Mutawakkil Ibn Qabrun. Long name. Let's call just call him Yikuti El. So, uh, so he he as a young young boy, he is transported after the death of his parents to, all the way to Saragossa in the north, thanks to their inheritance and to Yikuti El's support. He didn't need to work, so that is one uh, one worry taken care of. He left; they left their wi a will, and um, so he, he was taken care of. And he was a brilliant young man. Um, he studied Talmud. He studied grammar, philosophy, geometry, astronomy, and he was a very talented poet. You know, um, this is one of these old time. Sephardi uh, scholars that uh, that used to be like these Renaissance people, like almost all of them we met, they were so rounded, so so um, how do you say, uh, not, not compartmentalized, like not just only like rabbis have only studied Jewish uh, matters, and and within Judaism only uh, only Talmud and Halakha that you see that um, quite a lot. And um, or, or people who only do science. So the ideal of this old type Sephardi, and this is the Sephardi approach that I that I uh, would like to promote, is is that, and, and Maimonides says it uh, actually formulates it, it that truth. It's all about truth, and we take truth from wherever it comes. So if um, we can learn truth from science and from astronomy and from from, from then we have to accept it because we study if we study the Torah what we want to know is what God wants with us and what God's plans are with us and we try to but you can also that's that's only one aspect so so everything that's that is in creation comes from God and we learn from our creator we also by studying sciences so Philosophy is and, and and logic and 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 language. And language is important. Like gram why is grammar so important? Because la to understand language, because everything we say and everything we think, not necessarily what we feel, but what we think and how we relate, uh, is all based in language. So if, if our language is imprecise, then then um, there's no clarity in in what we do. And so our religion is expressed in language too, uh, and science is expressed in language, and so it's all very important. Um, so this is what he did. This is pretty cool. We'll go to our next slide. This is a uh, a poem. It's, it's two slides. This poem, uh, written by, of course, Ibn Gabirol, and um, it looks like a love poem, but is it a love poem? I'm going to ask somebody to read. Maybe Vivian, are you? Uh, at your um, at a good screen. Ah, dove, you Sharon rose with skirts all hung with bells, all hung with golden pomegranates like the very robe of priests. As you come away, you seem to rise like the very sun in heaven. Sit here by me, O loveliest gazelle, and stir your love's pleasure. Take up the drum and lute. Accompany your singing with a ten-stringed harp. Doesn't it like this? This looks. This sounds like the uh, beginning of a love poem, right? Um, it also has connotations to the to the priest, to the high priest who uh, who had bells and pomegranates on the seam on the the sem, whatever you call it, the hem of their robes. Um, but then it has uh, sun in heaven. Gazelle is always, uh, as we noticed, a a, a um, expression for a, uh, a a lover and um we'll continue let's see because it takes an interesting turn yes rise and praise your love your favorite yakutien ah. the lore of potentates illuminates yeah, Potent. illumination of the world the world's foundation the man on whom the pillars of the heavens rest secure L rulers repose their hopes in him and countries hang upon his every word 
he works to weariness on their behalf, the way of a father works to feed his children. He has a kindly wor word for every man. And then there are his gifts worth more than pearls. His spirits, his spirit is benign. His heart is liberal. His lips trustworthy ever. A Lord, a veritable sky above the earth with hands like clouds for bounty. When they dry up, the people perish. But when they pour, they fill the folk with song. May God fulfill his wishes speedily. This is a turn. It takes a turn and it becomes a praise of his patron, uh, which you saw was also a theme. But it's very interesting at uh, how he combines the two. Um, and, and he praises Yikuti El as basically the, like almost, I would almost say, an incorporation of God, like somebody really created in his God's image because um, he illuminates the world. He's the pillar, the foundation of the heaven that the heaven rests on, which means God can only do his job be because of the support of Yikuti El. And he does because he... Like God, he opens his hand and he and put um, the He opens his hand and he and he and he nourishes and he feeds people, and that's what he does. He is people go perish when he's not there, but when he gives, uh, they 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 break out in praise and in songs and in. Um, so he is. Uh, it looks that um, he's really beholden to Yikuti El, and Yikuti El is really a. Uh, how do you say a benefactor of many people? So he's he. It looks like he takes care of uh, at least in his environment in Zaragoza, of of poor people and of um, people in need and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So doesn't um, the the adulation seem over the top in in a way that almost um mm -hmm. it, 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 with with my eyes or ears perhaps totally out of context, seems almost farcical because it's so it's so heaped on so high. Um, yeah, I understand uh, that, that that might seem so, but, you know, this is poetry and this is a style that, um, that people uh, had. And um, what can I say? Um, it does, but it's not, definitely wasn't seen as farcic uh, farcical. Yeah, we live in a we live in a uh, cynical time. So we say, okay, when there's praise, we say, okay, enough already, right? Um, uh, but uh, look, if I don't know, of course, I know don't know the man, and I don't know the people who benefited from him. But if people are really perishing from from hunger and from from disease, and he saves their lives because of uh, because he feeds them, or then then yeah, why not use? some uh, flowery language i mean that's what he did but so he so he he yeah it looks like here he praises him over the top well, to I'm a sorry, way that even the young, young girls the young girls should be singing their love to him but he can also be the opposite very much uh, even gabiro he can uh, he can praise somebody to heaven but he can also um uh, uh, um, how do you say, malign people into the grave. But we'll see that. So here is a, um, an, a wine pour. I have a question. I oh, yeah, sure, question. sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, it was written in Arabic, in Arabic I mm -mm. assume, or in Hebrew? Yeah. In Hebrew. Now, the culture, I mean, the, the Jews <laughs> were in Spain, Arabic, uh, Muslim Spain. The culture was very much... Uh, and there is a terminology in Hebrew, uh, an Arabic uh, uh, imagination. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you, you mentioned we live in uh, cynical times, but the culture was always to to um, to exaggerate in 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 everything. Yeah, yeah even yeah. I mean, you see the 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 handwriting, the Arabic handwriting is very um, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So. It, it and at least not, it's um, a slim <laughs> way of expression. Yeah, that yeah. Was well, and, and it is, it is true what you're saying. It's very interesting because uh, you bring up the way Eric speaks. If it's, if somebody sings a song and it's beautiful, you say al You 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 um you you lit up uh, the country. I mean, uh, yeah. our homeland. So. Um, 
So no, it's not just, hey. oh, we were not, it's not just we were uh, enlivened or we were encouraged by a song. No, the whole country is now uh, uh, lit up. So, um, you know, it's, yes, Margot. Who, who's translation, who translated this, the poem? Um, who's translation? The, uh, somebody, I think it is um, the... Um, Maybe Kim Hee. Kim Hee? Just so that you know that no, no, Sharon Rose is Lily. Yeah. Yeah, Sharon yeah, Rose is Lily. Yeah, yeah, but uh, he just translated literally from Hebrew, Shoshanata yeah. Sharon, into English, but it is yeah. Lily. Nobody would know what uh, Sharon Rose is uh, no, a I flower, the name of a flower. Uh, but in the West, there was a long tradition to the people until uh, 100 years ago, people didn't know that really what the identities of these flowers were. So for hundreds of years, they've translated it as rose. And by the way, in English, rose originally mean all kind of flowers. So um, you could, uh, uh, but um, uh, it narrowed down to what we now call a rose. Um, and this is probably, no, um, Kimchi would translate from Arabic to Hebrew, but this was never, uh, I don't know of any, uh, of any poets, uh, Andalusian Jewish poets that, made um that wrote arabic poetry they all wrote poetry in hebrew mm -hmm. um so kim he wouldn't have to translate it now the question is uh, who translated this to english i think and um i can't it's it's i can't come up with uh i i forgot so um i i didn't write that down but it was a few years ago some of them i worked on but i usually i made it rhyme so uh, this is not rhyming so this is not my doing but uh, some of them are Okay, um, let's let's read this. This is in the style of uh, wine drinking, as is a very common theme. Uh, let me ask um, David to read this. On the one hand, Ibn Gabirol had the great self-confidence to the wine pourer. Don't be self-satisfied or vain that people clamor for your wine. Your craft is healing people's bodies, healing people's souls is mine. Yeah, so he said... Uh, People think, okay, you, you, your body, you feel so much better when you drink wine, your aches go away. But with my poetry, I heal souls, and that is on a higher level, right? So, and what is, and what does he say here? Uh, maybe do one more, and then I'll let you off the hook. Okay. A prince am I, and poems are my subjects. A harp am I for bards and singers all. My songs are crowns for kings and turbans for heads of courtiers. I'm only 16 years, not one day more, with wisdom like a man who's lived four score. Yeah, so he is as wise as an 81 year old. Yeah, not very uh, modest, this uh, little uh, Ibn Gabiro. Um, modesty is something is people talk about a lot of modesty in the Middle Ages, but you find it quite rarely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, he's a, he's he's himself. He envisions himself as a prince, and and he crowns kings, and he etc. And he's only so young, but he's already has the wisdom of a man of eighty. Why would you put that in? Well, he really because is... teenagers think like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they still know it all, as they say, right? Yeah. Yes. At that it age. struck me like the contemporary social media, all the self promotion. But oh, this, okay. so was that was 20, it. I mean, I don't think you can call these people teenagers when their life expectancy was only a few more years. I mean, <laughs> yeah. also, I really always, always, even for myself, I have to keep reminding myself these are different times, different cultures, very different. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not from our perspective of the 21st century America or even 20th century, you know. Yeah. This poem, it's like, you know, exemplifying the saying, with his tongue, with his pen, he, he, um, he makes kings, etc., etc. It doesn't mean that he is that full of himself, but he can, with his talent, he can do that. You know what people are, are uh, appear to be full of themselves. They also have, at the same time, often on the psychological level, uh, insecurity. So um, 
I think uh, he goes from back to forth. He is a, a man of extremes. We're going to see that. Um, maybe, uh, Alicia, maybe you want to um, write this. If I may, uh, one more point about that one. Yeah. <clears throat> I really viewed it as, I mean, remember, he doesn't have any family, right? Yeah. So I viewed it as, I feel like an old man. Uh-huh. You know, and I know a lot. I feel a lot. So, you know, I don't have the standard lifestyle that my friends may have. So mm. I had to grow up fast. Uh, that that's my take, but whatever. No, it could be it's all it's it's all um that and, and more. It's it's all everything that's brought up uh is uh, applies, I think. So this is a good one too. Um Alicia, would you like to read this? Uh because of his angry temperament and his harp, sharp pen, Ibn Gavirol made many enemies. However, as long as Yekutiel was around, he was protected. I am loyal to my friend with all my heart. I always honor those who honor me. My tongue is sharp as any court scribe, scribe's pen to prize a friend, to crush an enemy. You see, I have the weapons. I can praise you, but I can also crush you. Um, and because his uh, poems were uh, popular, um, it, um, uh, people had an effect because people memorize poems and they recite them to each other. And did you hear this one? And it is like social media. And somebody, he can cancel people, so to say, right? Um, all right. We'll do uh, the next one too, uh, Alicia. Could I ask a question? Mm. Yes, um, you will. These drawings are clearly from several centuries later, but yeah, it makes so. me wonder, were they writing with quills and ink? What were they writing with? Yeah, it has to be with quills. What were the instruments of writing then? Yeah, uh, quills and ink, that's been for many centuries, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is um, Middle Age, I don't know if you can see. Oh, look at that, David. Okay, it's a, an ink uh, for, for the middle age where you have ink here, you yeah. crush it, you add some liquid, and then you write and you or you paint or whatever. Very cool. <laughs> but it's, oh, not nice. a, it's not a quill, it's a, probably like a, a little crown a pen that you, yeah, it, it's a, a quill. Most of the time, it'll be a quill or a piece of a uh, roseau, how to say roseau, uh, yeah. uh, it's, you know. It, Along the river, you have some oh, quick, read, read. exactly. Oh, read, uh -huh. read, read, read. That's a that's a that's a name, yeah. Read, uh, you just read, but you you take the point and then yeah. you use it as a pen. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I um, the my first uh, grade, we uh, we were in an old school, uh, old building, and then when I went to second grade. We went to a new building and then we started, they discarded all the old materials. But the first year I still uh, learned to read with, uh, with a, a pen and an and inkwell. And, um, and, um, and if you had uh, a, good a number of good marks, you could actually were uh, rewarded with, um, to, you could write uh, the next one in red for a while. And that those were, instead of a sticker, you could, what is that, uh, Joel, you're showing? This is a Moroccan thing for writing. In these go the pens, and in here it goes the, here's the inkwell. Oh, how beautiful. Each of yeah. these is a pen. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wasn't that wonderful? Yeah. That was, um, and then you had to watch out to really do not to, not to put too much ink on it because it would drip, and they have all these drips on your paper and stuff like that, yeah. Okay, well, we'll read another one, Alicia. I mean, oh, the father of all sages ordered us. Who is that? God, no? Um, I think it is father Moses, of all sages. Moses, probably. probably. Moses, no? Moses. Probably. I think Moses. so. Yes. Uh, or it could be Solomon. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't have to capitalize, wouldn't it, if he referred to God? I mean, yeah, I but that's interpretation because there are no capitals in Hebrew. So that's the interpretation of the translator, of course. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So the father of all sages ordered us to keep away from strife and bickering. Yet you go 
picking fights and alter alteration altercation besides uh, committing every uh, hyena's sin beware an arrow sharp and highly armed honed. Honed, honed. beware the blazing blade of spear and sword if peace you want I'll gladly be your slave but if we fight I'll end up as your lord yeah so I think I worked on this because it does rhyme the founder of all sages ordered us to keep away from strife and bickering yet you go picking fights and altercations besides committing every heinous sin where an arrow and highly sharp and highly honed where the blazing blade blade of spear and sword if peace you want I'll gladly be your slave but if we fight I'll end up as your lord the rhyme is not strong but uh, it, there is something and there's a bit of a meter in the English and um, it's beautiful word choice <laughs> yeah so it's probably not mine <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah so he's saying you know this is the same thing he's really thinks of himself as very gifted with the word and so you know don't mess with me so he's not uh, strong physically he's not saying don't mess with me because I will uh, I will uh, you know uh, butcher you or, or beat you up he said, don't mess with me because I write a poem. <laughs> that is bullying, a uh, different type of bullying. All right. Mm -hmm. But tragic person in the same way. Um, maybe um, I'll go to Margot. Oh, oh, Herb, yes. Yeah, you know, he, he wrote he wrote very prayerful uh, poems. And yeah, a number yeah. of them have been included in the conservative Marxer. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you want, I'll, I'll read you a short one. It's called the Dew of Mercy. Thy people scorched by sun of hate, scourged by oppressors, Lord compassionate. Let healing mercy fall on fervid brow and cruel wounds as dew from heaven. For thou art God who hears thy faith by thy faithful servant's plea, shield unto all that trust in thee. Thy quickening spirit on our flesh outpour, her pristine beauty to our land restore. Thy saving grace bestow on us as due. Return, O Lord, and make us live anew. He, he had many, many poems. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which yeah. are part of prayers yeah. and part of dirges. So it's not just, you know, these secular poems, but he was a, a great religious writer. And a great philosopher. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, uh, yeah. We're going to get to his religious poetry, I'm sure. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, no, no. This is just the beginning. Um, the uh, And uh, the Sephardi tra uh, tradition has a lot of his poems on the high holidays. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about that, too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I first want to talk a bit about his personality and about his, um, and use his poetry for that. But this is a good one. Do, can, do you mind? It's not too long. If nobody has objections... Do you want to read it in Hebrew? Do you have the Hebrew there too? No, no. I, I just have I just have it the, in the English. That they, okay, the, the, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Okay, good. So he was a tragic figure. Look at, at this face. On the other hand, Ibn Gabirol was very sickly and led a miserable life, both physically and emotionally. He thought of himself as short and ugly, and he suffered under a very painful condition which is probably tuberculosis of the skin, something we heal, we can heal now, but that in those days could not be healed, and it's, uh, so that's very, very painful, supposedly. He writes this about his condition. Suffering has turned me scrawny. You could throw me into the eye of someone asleep, I'd not be felt. The ring that once was snug around my finger, I wear around my waist as a belt. Mm. She so he, it's even, uh, he's even making it funny. But um, so he was physically quite, quite miserable. Uh, we have to keep that in mind because that is, has had most likely that and the fact that he was an orphan and uh, uh, contributed to his uh, emotional ups and downs. So let's look at this because now we... So do you think it's more likely that he died at age 29 than the 49? Who knows? I, I have no. Um, if 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 the uh, 
if the uh, historians cannot figure it out, I'm, I don't... Uh, I hear you. I don't think... Thank you. I know, but it's. I don't think he lived very long because by what we're going to get to that, why? Like, okay, uh, I won't... Uh, so we'll go to him. When he was 70 years old, he wrote his uh, an Azhara. It's actually because the Azharot, an Azhara is a, is a poem that had lists all the 613 commandments in the Torah, uh, in um, on rhyme, of course. And um, and so there's a number of Azharot. Uh, in the Sephardi tradition, his version is read on Simchat Torah. Oh, not on Simchat Torah, sorry, on Shavuot. Um, on the first day, in most, in at least in our congregation, uh, in our tradition, the, the Spanish and Portuguese, the first day we read the positive commandments. Uh, the the that means you shall, and the prohibitions are read on the second day, but there might be communities where they do it only one day. I'm not sure. Uh, and um, which azarot do they read? And it's not called azarot um, in in the Ashkenazi tradition. It's called something else. And what? What the, which ones do they read in the Ashkenazi tradition, Herb? They don't read the Asarot. They do not. No, but they have something else which is similar. They have Akdamut Milin Akdamut. That's yeah. right. Oh, but that is not a, a list of no, the no. 16 and 30. I, I, I think it's an unknown author in Akdamut. I, I don't oh, think... Okay, uh, all right. Yeah, Akdamut, yeah. Here's the beginning of the positive commandments. Now, I have to say, um, I, this is only um, the beginning... <laughs> And you see in the beginning, and this is David. Uh, so you see here, it starts with the Shin. It starts with his name. Shemor libi ma'ane heye bimod na'ane. So this is Shlomo ben, and then Yere ha'el umne devarim haisharim. Ben? Yehuda. Yehuda. Okay. So his father was called Yehuda. So um, he he writes his name in the first um, one. We do you, uh, David. Do you have a, a tune for that in your tradition? I'm sure you do. V very is. Uh, it's read so fast because at the end of the service, <laughs> that you know nobody really sings it. Everybody's really eager to go home. Yeah, yeah. No, we we do it at the, before Musa, before uh, Mincha. No, we do it after Adondola. <laughs> oh, we so do. we do, for us it goes like this. Shimori be man, ye be old nan, reha el umne, the bari him, I shar him, ani hose tiha, ani his hartiha, ani drachtiha, whether he may shar him. That's that's the art too. Yeah, this is the positive commandments. Now, when you see the dot, 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 I skipped uh, some of it because um, because uh, I thought this was interesting. So let's read. My soul, this is the introduction, upholds the right response. Be exceedingly responsive. Revere God and count these proper words. I led you out. I cautioned you, meaning I gave you light. That's another, like uh, his hartiha could be from Zohar, means uh, shining. His hartiha could be, I gave you light, but it could also be, I caused you, be from, from uh, Azhara. Like, um, it has two meanings. I guided you on the straight forward paths of the uh, awe inspiring God. Proclaim his oneness twice a day. When you pray day by day, evening and morning, that's about the Shema. Serve him and love him with all your heart and cleave to him so that your steps will follow his path and be steadfast. Sanctify him in his greatness. Fear his retribution. Swear by his name only, by his name only, with no falsehood or lies. Know that his judgments are just and follow his righteousness. Keep his law and fulfill his commandments. So this is just a little section of the positive commandments. It's, uh, it's much longer. Now we can go to the second. This is just the uh, from the from the beginning of the mitzvot lota, I say, of the prohibitions. In the shadow of the Almighty do I hide. This is the introduction. I will not hide His justice, which is found in His prohibitions, but I will proclaim His straight instructions. I am the Lord, is what I called out to you at Mount Sinai. You shall not have other gods before me. This is the first prohibition. Do not make a statute. 
in wickedness and stupidity. Do not place an idol, provoking my anger with alien practice. Shun them as a destroying fire. Bring no abomination into my house. Raise no sacred pillar and plant no grove to other gods. Turn aside from a false tale. Believe no lie and do not take my precious names in vain. Keep the law against adultery so you won't meet my divine anger. Do not contemplate theft and don't covet what belongs to your friend. This is a, these are based on the Ten Commandments and it goes much, uh, it goes on and on. So um, yes, so this is, uh, and it's all the same tune. And that sounds uh, a bit tedious to have these long poems in the same tune, but we do, uh, we do a few and then somebody else sings it. So you have a, a change of voices and that is uh, that makes it maybe more interesting. So that is the Azharot. Um, we're gonna go back to the Azharot towards the end because um, somebody wrote an introduction to the Azharot. I'm gonna mention him later. His name is David Ben Pakuda. Now that same year, the same year when he's 17 years old, that's around the time that he wrote the Azharot, his protector Yukuti El is assassinated, not just died of an illness, assassinated. So this me, it is me something, as, as I would say in Dutch. Um, and, um, and maybe Margot wants to read this poem. I will read this poem, but do you have any um, information as to the circumstances surrounding the assassination? No, I don't know. I don't know. Look, people in power have enemies. Yes, of course. Uh, and so... Um, who no, no, I don't have any background. I don't know if it exists. Uh, it might be. It would be interesting. So I will, uh, if anyone keeps his eyes peeled, if you come across something, that would be interesting and a little contribution to this to this class. Or I can cannot uh, go back and teach this again, but I can uh, add it. I would I would be able to add it in into the slides of my, on my website, and that would be nice. You so can or knows cannot. It? I just, uh, you know, you you always have such a wealth of information, and you only have certain time to get them all on slides. So I asked on the offhand chance that you. No, did no, have I would like to know. Backstory. It's always good. It's nice, okay. it's nice because also it gives an an insight in what's going on. You know, um, not, not a lot of, especially students that I teach, they don't uh, anything that makes the past alive for them is is always well, welcome, I think. Yes. That's true for most of us, I think, or mm. at least your students who choose to be here with. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I go. Behold the sun at evening red as if she wore vermilion robes. She slips the wraps from north to south, dresses the west in purple gown, then strips the earth and leaves it bare to dwell in shadows through the night. At once the sky is black, as if in sackcloth for you could tell. Now it is very, very pretty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I have it in wonderful you. description. Yeah, I, I am touched with it again. Now what happens to him? Luckily for Solomon, now we go back to Samuel and Nagid. Samuel Nagid had found out about him, about his talents. And he's always looking out for a good uh, uh, a poem, a poet, and he likes poetry. So he becomes his new supporter, and he invites him to come over to Granada. So he is not alone. Um, he is, um, and so he moves again south, not too far from where he grew up, he, uh, where he was born in Malaga when he was young. He goes back to Granada almost all the way, and he lives in the court with Samuel Hanagid. When Ibn Gabriel was 19, he wrote a 400 verse acrostic poem in which he describes the, in all the rules of Hebrew grammar in poetry. Um, <clears throat> that's interesting <coughs> because there is such a poem in Arabic also, which describes the Arabic uh, grammar. And to study that poem is so much harder than studying the grammar. <laughs> and I don't have, and uh, it's really, and uh, I don't have this poem of Ibn Gabirol, neither do I have it of the Arabic. It would be very interesting. Once again, there's so much stuff going on if every, anyone has access. But I bet my boots, uh, my clogs, that um, <laughs> that uh, this is probably also a quite a, a complicated poem. Um, yeah. 
So because you have to know all the terminology that was used in those days for the for grammar and uh, just uh, just fabulous and, and fascinating, right? Okay, so that is when he's 19 years old. So he, he already had written all these things, all these poems, and he had written the Azahara when he's 17 years old. I mean, yeah. And and 19 this, he is uh, quite a, uh, a nerd. Well, yeah, no, he's, he's somebody, somebody else, uh, so, quite something. Now, this is here, Shofet um, Kola Aretz. We don't have Shofet Kola Aretz yet. Here it is. Um, this is a, uh, a bakasha that is sung at the beginning. Um, uh, before you pray, this is optional. You can sit. This is like a, a, a like a meditation for the morning. We're going to go to Shofet Aretz uh, later. Um, at dawn, I seek you, my rock and my fortress. I spread out before you my morning and evening prayer. In front of your greatness, I stand and I am perplexed. For your eye perceives my every inner thought. What can the heart and the tongue accomplish to achieve? And what's my strength, my spirit inside? Surely you are pleased with the song of man. Therefore, I will praise you as long as my God-granted soul is within me. Yeah, in Amsterdam, they sing this uh, quite often. It is uh, common there. It goes like this. Is they have a very nice tune. It goes like this. Shahara bakesh ha 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 suri umis gabi eroch lefanecha shahri v'gamnarbi shahri v'gamnarbi but they actually drag it out a bit. It goes like this. yeah, it's fun too, but you rush it uh, compared to the Amsterdamers. I don't want to take too much time. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's time. The, time is precious. Israeli, Israeli Andalusian orchestra has many songs of his uh, tune with the whole full orchestra violence and everything. Right. So here is uh, Shofet Kola Aretz, uh, judge of the entire world. Um, and um, let's read it first. It's not that long, and it's uh, it's written on it's it's sung on mm -hmm. Rosh Hashanah. And um, uh, judge of all the earth, you set it up for judgment. Please grant life and kindness for your poor people. Accept their morning prayer as a substitute for the burnt offering, the burnt offering of the morning, which is continuous. Offering, which is a continuous offering. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, you are closed and enveloped in righteousness. You know, I would much rather they use the word goodness than righteousness. <laughs> yeah, but uh, to, uh, goodness is a different uh, word in uh, in Hebrew. I know, I know. I'm just uh, personally. You, you know, can maybe just, uh, translate it as charity, but that's a bit strange to be clothed in charity. But maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you alone are perfect. Uh Stephen Hawkins would disagree. Uh, yes. If we have no good deeds to show for you, then remember those who sleep in Hebron. May their memory appear constantly before you as the burnt offering of the morning, which is a continuous offering. Now, the people who sleep in Hebron are <clears throat> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their uh, spouses. Uh, and that's always like, if we don't have enough good deeds, then may God just um, uh, count the merits of our ancestors. And he calls them the uh, Yeshene Hevron, which is a nice way of to refer to that. Uh huh. You are included. Inclined. Uh, you are, inc well, you are moving. <laughs> you are inclined to kindness, granting a person life, inclined towards your people with kindness, bestow, bestow on them that they may live. Inscribe them with the token of life, 
may that be continuously on their forehead, like the burnt offerings of the morning, which is a continuous offering. Beautiful paintings, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Favor Zion, you holy city, your holy city, with your goodness. Grant power and glory to the holy priest in your temple. Rekindle the light of the son of Jesse as the perpetual lamp, just like the burnt offering of the morning, which is a continuous offering. Yeah, so the son of Jesse is, <clears throat> is King David, right? Yes, Ben Yishai. I guess. Yeah, Joel? I, I have a question. Do you know whether these poems, because they lose their arrogance. Sorry, they what? They lose the arrogance of the early poems you read mm -hmm. to us. Are these later or are they just parallel that the religious ones are not so arrogant? Um, I, I, but maybe I know, he know, got I much may... more mature as his illnesses got worse. Right, that's true. Um, and also he had even more loss in his life. Yeah, but his um, his religious poets uh, uh, poems are not uh, self-indulging or, or boastful. Because but are they later? I don't, I think... Not necessarily. We don't know. No, because uh, because you know the Azharot, he was seventeen. That's that's already religious, right? And it's nothing about his ego. So that I wouldn't call that later. Although he started very young, so maybe for compared to thirteen yeah. year old and a seventy year old, maybe he felt that he was already like had the wisdom of an eighty year old. So for him, maybe it was later. But uh, yeah. But at he, seventeen, he Rabbi. Uh, at 17, he had just lost his patron, who was also obviously like a father to him. Right. And he was removed again from a community. He was, he like obviously knew people and had yeah. friends. So it's more and more loss at the age of 17. So I'm thinking maybe he had a kind of, a, you know, a spiritual awakening. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't know. I don't think so, to be honest. I don't think so. Okay. I think towards, okay. they, yeah, one second, uh, Tarfon. So towards the end, he ri starts writing more philosophical things. That is later. Um, and um, yeah, so he's working on himself. That is for sure. He's trying mm -hmm. to work on himself. Tarfon, yes, say what you want. Yes, uh, oh, thank you so much, Rabbi. I want to know the scripture that uh, Ben has just read. Who is considered to be a poor person here? The poor, the poor people is the Jewish people. It's a. Uh, this is in uh, Rosh Hashanah. We sing. It's on. It's on behalf of the Jewish people. Yes. So it says it in the beginning. Please grant life and kindness for your poor people. So this is uh, for the the Jewish nation. Yeah. Because we so are the poor. Nation. We are poor because oh. we are. We don't have God to offer anything to God, and so instead of, um, and we would like to uh, him to. Uh, to, to forgive us, even though we have nothing to offer. But yeah. also, this is an English translation, and poor could have been different kinds of words. Like poor doesn't need necessarily mean poverty. It can mean unfortunate. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's So uh, it says, Nachim v'chesed al-am ani Ani means poor, but yeah, poor trial. could be uh, financially poor, but also... A poor, uh, poor in another way. That, that is a double entendre, both in English and in Hebrew. Yes, sir. Oh. Downtrod. Ani. Yeah. Could also Downtrod. You know, beneath. Yeah. True. Could it also imply not worthy? No, no, no. no. no, no, no not no, sure. No. That is a bit of a stretch. No, no. Of course, they're all connected. These words, and if because if you're if you're uh, if you're poor, you are looked down upon, and then you don't feel worthy. Mm. But it's a bit of a stretch. Could be more like there's a sense of miserable, on a miserable miserable, day. yeah, maskin, yeah, whatever. Yeah. All right, we'll continue with Ben. Okay. Um, be courageous and strengthen your heart, my people, in God and His power. If you just keep his instructions, God will both make you courageous and strong. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continuously, like the burnt offering of the morning, 
which is a continuous offering. Today, the children of your servants flock to your sanctuary. They call the righteous deeds of their ancestors. For their sake, O oh God, grant them life. Remember them, and may they be continuously before you, just like the burnt offering of the morning, which is a continuous offering. Yes, hold on. Shofet kol ha'aretz ve'ota b'mishpat yangamid na'ayim ha'chesed ngam ganit atzmid ve'et tefilat ha'shachar b'mkom ha'tamid Ngolat ha-bohr asher Ngolat ha-tamid Lo b'hesh sedakah Umanateh Lecha l'badcha ha-yitron Im en banu Manasim Zohra yishena hebron Ve'im yanalu l'zikaron Ifne Adonai Tamid Ngolat ha-boker Asher L'ngolat ha-tamid One more Ma'ateh Khlappi chesed L'hatot ish l'tchiyah Ngam khateh L'chesed G'mol n'angalav v'chayah K'tob t'ah v'chayim V'chayang al mitzchot amid N'olat ha-boker Asher L'ngolat ha-tamid B'nei n'abadecha Ha-hayom L'mikdashecha yeta hayu Zoharim Tzitkot abotam Adonai n'alehem yichyu Otam tizgor V'hayu n'eret Adonai Tamid N'olat ha-boker Asher yeah, it's it's a, not a very um, uplifting tune. <laughs> okay, you uh, did that beautifully, though. I, I enjoyed that. Oh, great! Now here, we probably have another whole class to fill because look, there is more. See, maybe we'll stop here and then then we'll um, and then we'll continue.